Hi there, thank you for stopping by. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can optimize your computer for lower CPU usage when you are producing music. I know there's a lot of you out there that produces music but not necessarily know that much about how a computer works. So in this video today I want to give you some tips you can set in your music production software and maybe some ideas in how you can improve your uh, workflow. In this video I'm using uh, Logic Pro X and I'm using Ableton Live but most of the settings I'm going to talk about today you will find in other music production software as well. They may be named differently but uh, if you look around you can find it there as well. So the first thing you can take a look at is something called buffer size and in Logic here we can go to preferences and audio and you have something called IO buffer size. So in my case it's a set to 256 but what you can do here is you can raise it to the maximum value of in this case 1024 and you click apply changes. When you increase the buffer size it will introduce latency in your project but if you are just in the mixing phase or if you are producing in the box it doesn't really matter that much. It matters the most if you are doing some external recording with uh, synthesizers in real time and th uh, things of that uh, nature. So that's the first thing you can set and in Ableton Live you go to preferences and buffer size over here. Another thing you can take a look at is your project's sample rate. In Logic Pro you find it under File, Project Settings and Audio. And you have something called Sample Rate here. In my case I'm using 44.1. You can set it to 48, 96 and 192 in this case. If I set it to 96 and open up the CPU meter you can see that the performance, we can compare the performance here. I'm using uh, about half of my computer's resources here and can hear the fan going up and if I change it back down to 44.1 you can see that the CPU load is uh, much less when you uh, reduce the sample rate. And again in Ableton Live you go to preferences and in out sample rate over here. So reduce the sample rate to be able to run more instruments and effects at the same time. So now we can take a look at the VSTs, instruments or audio units in this case. And again this is not only for Max or only for Logic Pro. What I am going to talk about here it applies to all kind of kinds of music production software. Also interchangeable between a Mac and a PC. The general idea here translates between all of the system. You don't have to have Logic Pro to make use of the uh, suggestions I'm going to give you now. So now we can just take a look at a VST instrument in uh, this track. In this case I'm using uh, Serum. And we can go through some other VSTs as well later on, uh, Diva and Alchemy, we can take a look at those as well. Uh, this synth is just playing this uh, little note. With uh, some effects uh, applied and uh, things of that sort. So in Serum the settings that can reduce your CPU load is first of all under Global here. You have something called Oscillator settings, you have one draft and you have 2x and you have 4x. Basically you can set it to 2x and uh, if you set it to 4x you probably won't hear any difference at all. The only time you will probably hear some difference if, is if you are doing some com complex warping or introducing FM. But in general 2x works fine in Serum. But if you are experiencing a lot of dropouts you can try to set it to 1 to draft. This will reduce the CPU load. So what you can do is you can set it to 1 when you are producing your track and uh, just remember to set it to 2 or 4x when you are exporting to final mix. Under oscillators here we have uh, a few settings we can take a look at, especially the setting called uh, unison. If you increase this you will also increase the voices Serum is using and thus also the CPU usage. So if you have unison at 1, it will be the lowest CPU load. And as you increase the unison, you will also increase the CPU load because it creates uh, multiple voices. And if you have one synth playing huge chords, it will also increase the CPU usage. 
If you have a long release time on your patches, it can also increase the CPU load. So you can try to bring down the release time maybe when you're producing and you can increase it when you export the project. And I have another synthesizer in this project called Diva. It's a great sounding synth, but it's also heavy on the CPU. But what I can do here also is that I can set it to draft and uh, just make sure that offline is set to best. And you can also decrease uh, the amount of voices here. And you can also make sure you have enabled uh, multi-core so it takes advantage of uh, multiple cores in your system. So what this means is when now when you are producing music and playing back your project, it will use uh, the draft mode uh, when generating the audio. But when you export your project, it will use the best audio quality settings in Diva when you set this uh, offline ACC to best. In the included synthesizer in Logic Pro called Alchemy, you also have quality settings much like you see in uh, Diva. You can set it to draft, good, great or ultra. And this is how it uh, generates uh, the audio in real time. So again, if you have a slow computer and when you are producing the music, you can set the audio quality to draft so you don't get uh, hindered by, by your computer. And uh, you will probably hear a little difference, but I don't think that difference is so bad that it will prevent you from producing the music you want to produce. And now we can take a look at the mixer and again this applies to many different music production uh, softwares so this is not only for logic pro but this is kind of workflow uh, tip uh, as you can see here i have four different tracks playing uh, a plucked sound you can just take a listen to it how it sounds <laughs> here you have a lot of echo and a lot of reverb and everything there and you can also see that in the mixer here we have four of these tracks representing each instrument so if i wanted reverb on my tracks there are dif different ways of doing that i can add a reverb instrument on each and every track here here and on this track and on this track and on this track so i can have four different reverb plugins with four different settings on each and every track but if i want to use kind of the same settings i can use something called send effects and using that means that all these four tracks can use the same reverb plugin and it prevents me from using four plugins taking up a lot of cpu if i use four reverb plugins that will take up more cpu than using just one reverb plugin another thing you can do is something called freezing tracks and that basically takes the MIDI data and transform it into an audio file. And an audio file is much less demanding for your computer to play back. So in Logic Pro, you can do something like this. You can control click your track header and enable something called freezing. And you see you have this snowflake here. So I can take this track using Diva. Diva is pretty CPU heavy and I just click this little snowflake button here and when I play back it will freeze the track so now it renders the track into an audio file and the reason it's going behind here is because there is an audio tail it's also rendering so now you can see here in the mixer that the synthesizer and some of the effects are grayed out you can't uh, change them but the send effects are uh, still there so now I can play it back And now I can just play it back and it won't put that much load on the CPU. The drawback of this is if I want to edit this, let's say I want to edit uh, a note here. It asks me, the current track is frozen. Do you want to unfreeze it? So you unfreeze the track. Now you can edit all of the notes again. And then you have to freeze the track again to reduce the CPU load. So it adds a little bit more time to your workflow. But this can be very helpful if you have a slow computer and have to add more tracks. It can also be a wise thing to just go over your projects and see if there are some tracks in that project with instruments and effect plugins that you don't use. And you should go ahead and delete those tracks just to save up some uh, few CPU cycles. 
I know that there is a setting in FL Studio where you can make it uh, disable plugins you are not using, so make sure you go through the settings of your music production software and see that, it, uh, that you have all of these things uh, turned on. So if you're still having issues with your computer, even after following these steps, there could be some hardware issues, there could just be that your computer is just too slow. Uh, there are of course a few more things you can do. Uh, on a Mac you can for example start something called Activity Monitor. Uh, you can search for it in Spotlight and you can open up Activity Monitor. And if, if you look in Activity Monitor you can see what kind of applications on your computer that is taking up significant CPU load. In my case, as you can see here, I am using OBS as I am recording this screen. It's using quite a lot of the CPU. And then uh, Logic Pro is laying around there in the background and uh, some other things. So this could be a good way of taking a look at if you have if you have installed something or if you have something just taking up your CPU cycles, you can go in here and try to turn off the application and you can also try to uninstall it if there's nothing you are using anymore and yeah just take a look and the equivalent in Windows is called task manager and you can open the task manager by pressing control shift escape and in the task manager there you will get also a list of processes that may take up a lot of your CPU cycles and just go through that list and see if you find something that is uh, looks uh, out of place and uh, maybe Google the name of the process this also applies as I mentioned for the Mac earlier just to see if there's something you can do about it if you are producing on Windows it could also be useful that you go into your power settings and set it to high performance and if you're using a laptop and you're running on battery, this will drain your battery faster, but it will give you the most performance for music production. So when you record MIDI data, that's not actual audio. What you are recording is, you can say that's kind of a text file or instructions telling the synthesizer what to do. So the notes I have on the screen here, these notes are telling Diva you have to play these notes and you have to play them in real time and you have to output them to the computer and diva asks the cpu hey can you generate this audio in real time uh, right now and the cpu says sure here here you go and it goes and crunches all of that data and if you add up more divas and if you add up more serums and if you just you just go on and adding up more and more instruments it will get to a point where it won't be able to do that in real time anymore because the notes you have here in your DAW that's only text files there's only instructions telling the plugins what to do so that's also why we freeze track sometimes so the VST doesn't have to ask the CPU to generate the audio so to sum up this video make sure you're using a high buffer size especially if you are just producing in the box also know what kind of sample rate you are using, 44.1 or 48 kHz is standard. Go through your VST instruments, check the quality settings on them. You can have draft quality settings on all instruments while you produce the music. The most important part is that you can produce the music and you can worry about the audio quality later on and you can always increase the audio quality when you are ready with the track and you are about to export the final file. I have another little tip for you if you are creating a patch on an instrument and you want the full quality you can create a new project and just have one track with one instrument and you can create that patch there and when you're done with that and you believe that the audio is sounds great you can open up your original project and you can bring in that patch and set it to draft and that will also work just fine make sure also to go through all of your tracks if there are some tracks you are not using you should delete them because they can contain instruments and effects and they will even if they don't produce that much audio they will lie around there and take up some cpu as well if you are using effects think about using send effects instead of adding effects on each and every channel 
if you add 10 reverb plugins compared to let's say two reverb plugins obviously two reverb plugins will use much less cpu than 10. so if you can maybe group up your reverb plugins to let's say lead reverb plugins and then maybe drum reverb plugins and you can have two cents for that and that will also reduce a lot of the load as i said earlier also check out activity monitor or task manager and see if you have any application that are taking up a lot of your resources and i have another little thing as well if you are producing on a laptop make sure the power supply or the power brick you use for your laptop is the one that came with it i'm using the 16 inch macbook pro here and i'm using the cal digit usb-c docking the usb-c docking outputs 87 watts but the 16 inch macbook pro requires 96 watts to operate in full performance if i use only the docking station the per performance actually goes down a little bit because it's not able to draw 96 watts so i have to use the original power adapter to get the full performance of this computer so that could be a thing to know as well so i hope this video helped you in some way if you don't have the money to buy a new computer uh, there is a lot of settings you can do as you have seen now and don't worry so much about the quality the most important thing is that you can produce the music you want to produce and you can worry about the quality settings later on you can always increase the quality when you are done with the track if you think someone will benefit from this video you are welcome to send them that way that will also help me and this channel if you like content like this subscribing to the channel or liking the video or both that sends signals to google that you <laughs> like it and it will of course increase my visibility in the all mighty algorithm and i thank you for that you can also support by following me on Spotify, maybe listening to some of my tracks I have there. And if I manage to make you a super fan, I also have a Patreon page where I have tiers where you can download my music from a Google Drive folder and some other things as well. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped and I will see you in the next one.